Praise God, praise God, praise God. Glory be to God in the highest place. Glory be to God. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Greetings in the name of the Lord our God. Praise the Lord, praise God. Wonderful Jesus, glorious Lord, the shepherd of our soul, for there is absolutely none like unto our God. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same is the lift of our head, the soul, the anchor of our soul, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and besides him there is none, praise God. There is absolutely none like unto our God. None like unto our God. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Uh, I'm going to be very brief uh, to this evening. My brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, watching from different parts of the world. I'm going to be very brief. Just in line with the series dealing with on the shepherdhood. That Christ is the shepherd of our soul. We all always look unto some somebody who's more senior to us, somebody more resourceful, somebody more uh, stronger than us, somebody more knowledgeable, somebody wiser, somebody more insightful, somebody who's been around for a while to lean on and uh, to counsel us and to advise us on the terrains of life. We all do have references here and there. Even in the human realm, in our professions, and our pursuits, and wherever we are involved in, whatever we are involved in, we always have somebody we can always look forward to counsel us, advise us, give us insights, and give us wisdom and direction in uh, our careers, our pursuits, our passions, inclinations, or just our counsel in different uh, aspects and dimensions of life. But no one in all and in every sphere in terms of a human uh, realm could be wiser or more insightful than the one who owns the blueprint of our life, the one who knew us before we were created the matrix of our mother's womb, the one who ordained us even before the foundation of the world, before the sons of God, sang for joy as he laid the foundations of the earth. You and I were in the mind of God throughout eternity, and God had will and purpose that our lives will be blessed and empowered, emboldened to live and to be effective all along in the space and span of life that he has ordained for us. And that's the reason why we have the audacity to always have our reference to the architect of the blueprint. <laughs> the one who understands the nooks and the crooks and the landscape, and the details and the details of our lives. And that one is our shepherd, the shepherd of our soul. <laughs> He knows the truncated spars, he knows the terrains, he knows the heights, he knows the lows, he knows the plains, he knows the seashores, he knows the jagged stones, he knows the desert places, he knows the springs, he knows the attention wells, he knows uh, every detail of the landscape of our lives. He even understands our temperaments. He knows our preferences. He knows our inclinations. He knows our pursuits. He knows our biases. He knows everything about our life. That's why we call him the shepherd. David, having been a man tempered, of course, with a zeal for God, but also had glaring weaknesses. And so he understood it. He says, Thou knowest, O God, my rising and my going down. They say, Lord, where shall I therefore 
uh, make man aboard. If I make man aboard in Sheol, thou art there. If I make my board in the uh, heaven of heavens, thou art there. If I make my boards out of the seas or the earth, thou art there. From whence shall I hide from thy presence, O God? For he understood very well that the Lord is his shepherd, praise God. When he reflected and he began to, uh, in retrospect, to see how his life had been weaved, and how he maneuvered throughout his life. He understood with immediacy by revelation could ever even come down. You know, everything is in place. Everything we got it going on, as they say. Everything uh, dovetails. Everything pleasant. Things are falling in pleasant places. Everything okay. Magic. Wonders. The touch of the middles. Excellent. Fantastic as we would say and then suddenly everything collapsed and then again we wonder will we ever again climb up the mountain tops shall we ever be in the peaks of life again and even in the depths and the most bottom loneliest of the law he was still our shepherd even as we began our journey to climb up the ladder again to life he was our shepherd he held our hand and he said, we shall overcome and prevail, and we shall always be all that he has called us to be. That's the reason why the psalmist David, the lyricist, the composer, the king of the nation of Israel, who ushered in the golden era 40 years, they say there had never been another day or another season of the exploits of triumph, like the season ushered by King David, the 40 years called the golden era. Not even the days of Solomon, the days of peace, 40 years of the reign of peace. Not one arrow, not one javelin, not one bow was raised for war in the days of Solomon. And yet he could not match the days of David. Why? Something about pursuing our shepherd. Something about when we pursue our shepherd. He guides us, he leads us by his role. Yes, that's fine. But something about us also pursuing our shepherd. No wonder the psalmist David, the lyricist, the composer, the king of the nation of Israel, the mighty warrior, the battle tactician and parallel. No wonder he said, the Lord is my shepherd. Who do you refer to? as your shepherd sometimes we say we have good fathers sometimes we say you know we got people who are very strong and highly placed in government high places or people who are very resourceful in terms of uh, human and natural resources monetarily even sometimes or high connections or global or international connections but all that is pledging and all that is splitting and all that comes to an end because people rise and come down. But our shepherd never rises and comes down like a lift in a tall building. He's always forever at the peak of his power, at the peak of his glory and excellence and opulence. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. To reiterate the son, Miss David, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. <laughs> you know, when David reflected on how God protected him among the Philistines, on the solemn Saul, the first king of the nation of Israel, who was begging for his blood, his people had rejected him. His wives also at one time who were snatched away from him. His sons who stood against him and literally snatched his wife from him. Messed with them on tops of the building while Israel was watching. When he had to be chased <clears throat> from his throne and reduced to an ordinary citizen and had to run for the mountains until his own counselor 
Ahithophel have to counsel his son and say, pursue the king when he's famished and weak. Then you can lay hold of him and you can take care of him. It means you can disseminate him because now he's waxed, weak, he's famished. His own counselor, a man that he fed, a man that ate with him at the same table, and later he said, a man that I fed with my own bread, who shared my bread at my own table, has raised his hand against me. <laughs> but throughout, and through it all, the Lord was the shepherd of David. The Lord is our keeper. The Lord is our shepherd. Even when we are rejected, dejected, forsaken, left for dead, the Lord is our shepherd. You recall Apostle Paul at some point himself, as he was zealously preaching and spreading the gospel to different uh, uh, places. And one time was beaten, left for dead, and lowered in a basket on a, a wall. And when he was left for dead and thought that he had uh, completely, he was completely breathless and he had nothing to uh, lean on. Walk dusted himself and yet preached again because he knew the Lord was his shepherd and the Lord would strengthen him. Praise God. When Paul and Silas were jailed, incarcerated for preaching the gospel, their backs lacerated, slapped and their beards flat, spat on, and warned never to preach the gospel of the kingdom of God and of his Christ again. And they were incarcerated in their uh, uh, legs fitted and their uh, hands handcuffed in chains and they let out a praise in the midnight hour they began to praise and glorify magnify the lord for his faithfulness the shepherd of their soul for his goodness and mercy that endureth forever they reminded the shepherd how he shepherded the children of Israel for 40 years without any protection he shepherded them and guarded them and protected them by his shepherd uh, by his uh, rod and staff that guided them and led them they praise and magnify the Lord their king the prison walls shook like an aspen leaf the walls rumbled and they up quick and the stocks were broken, the fetus were broken, and they were let go because the shepherd protected them, shielded them, and guided them, and let them out of the prison doors until the prisoner said, what shall I do to be saved? People who have witnessed your work and how the shepherd over your soul has been faithful over your life will be a witness of the saving grace over your life. Will be a witness of the hand of the shepherd over your life. Glory be to God. The Lord bless and keep you. Just know the Lord is our shepherd. We shall not be afraid of any circumstance or any situation. The Lord keepeth us. Our exceeding great reward, the Lord our keeper, our shield and buckler, our very prominent, conspicuous, steadfast protection, help in times of need and trouble. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Need I say more? Just remember, the Lord is your my our shepherd the lord bless you and keep you and the lord do you good the lord lift you and raise you don't forget the lord is our shepherd we shall not want for anything he protects 
He shields, he barricades, he surrounds us with his mercy, loving kindness, with his power and glory and majesty. Glory be to God. With his righteous right hand, he hath delivered us and saved us. You have nothing to be afraid of. Don't be afraid. Don't be fearful. Be of good cheer. Rejoice. And again I say rejoice in the Lord your God. For the Lord is our shield and buckler. Glory be to God. Every time I begin to reflect and think about the goodness of God, I want to shout. I want to scream. I want to shout on tops of the Himalayas at Mount Everest and tell the entirety of the world, the Lord is our shepherd. Glory be to God. 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 The Lord bless you and keep you. And please do share the broadcast and please do praise the broadcast on your watch party. And please send it to as many groups as you can. And please do understand that we are living in the best of the days. Don't be afraid. Don't you worry. We are living in the best of the days since creation. The Holy Ghost is within us. The blood of Jesus speaks better things than the blood of Abel. The mercies and the loving kindness of God. We are in the image and the likeness of our God. The shepherd of our soul. Don't be afraid. Don't regress. Don't regret. Don't ever wonder. No. For surety, the Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want for anything in Jesus' name. Glory be to God. The Lord bless and keep you once again. I don't want to stop, but I must need stop. For yet another time again this evening, this night, I'm going to come shouting and praising God for all that you have done for us in Jesus' name. Father, bless your people. Raise a standard. Lift their countenance. Bless the works of their hands. Guide, lead, shield them. Because you are our shepherd, the shepherd of our soul. We love you. We worship you. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. God bless you. See you again. Amen.